Howdy, welcome back to Heat Check. Uh, sorry for the delay, Hogwarts Legacy came out, so I obviously had to grind that periodically. I've got a long and growing list of Heat Check players that I want to get to, so if you have dropped players in the comments, just know that I've seen it, I've added them to the list, and I hope to get to them. One other thing I keep forgetting to plug, I do a weekly NBA draft podcast called The Draft Digest Show. I'll put that link in the description. You can find that pretty much anywhere you get your podcast, so go check that out. Here's how Heat Check works. I will identify one NBA draft prospect and grade what I believe to be their five most generally important skills regarding the NBA. Scoring, defense, passing and playmaking, athleticism, and overall feel for the game. Since no two prospects are alike, I'll grade a few additional areas specific to that player deemed the swing skills. Each skill will be graded on the heat check chart, with ranges from cold all the way to scorching. When that's all said and done, I'll divvy out one final overall score that will have absolutely no bearing or real world effect on said player whatsoever. Next up in the series is Indiana freshman guard Jalen Hood Shafino. The top recruit in the entire Big Ten this year, Hood Shafino led Montverde Academy, who has sent the likes of Cade Cunningham, Scotty Barnes, Ben Simmons, and a ton more to the NBA to two championships while in high school. Across ESPN, 24-7 sports, and rivals, he averaged out to the number 22 ranked recruit. He's a true point guard, listed at 6'6", 210 pounds, and he looks every bit of it. He's got really good positional size and length and plays to his strengths with it. Through 22 games this season, he's averaging 12.6 points, 4.2 assists on some okay shooting splits. He'll be freshly 20 years old on draft night. Starting with athleticism, Huchipino isn't overly athletic by any means. He's not going to have any crazy vertical, he doesn't have any sort of blazing speed or quickness, but that's just fine for his playstyle. Like I said earlier, at 6'6", he's got a really nice frame for a true point guard, so he's going to make his money using that, along with his really nice change of pace and footwork. That said, he really likes to get elevation often, especially on his floater looks. So he's not necessarily some above the rim player, but he's really advantageous and has a good feel for what to do when, which we'll get to later. I'm feeling warm on Huchifino's scoring, and even just a slight bump in efficiency across the board by the end of the season could get me to hot. He wasn't a lock to be a three-level scorer coming into the season, but here we are. He's shooting 53% at the rim, not amazing, but workable, 45% on medium jumpers from 17 feet to the three-point line, and 39% from beyond the arc. He's got a really good feel and anticipation on the offensive end of the court, he plays in a really good Indiana system that has some of the best players in the country, and he stands out in it. He's an absolute pick-and-roll maestro, something that's really going to help him excel in the NBA. As stated earlier, he's not explosive, but he's got a really good poke and prod, probing style of play. Another thing that I think is really going to translate. He's smart, cerebral, and can really get to his spots, which he has several of. Inside, his length helps him around the rim. He doesn't have enough speed, lateral quickness, or dribble moves to completely get defenders on his hip, but he's long and strong enough he can find creative ways to finish a lot of the time. His issue inside is that he can't get there consistently or at will. The mid-range is probably where he's at his best. He's got a really, really smooth jumper and replicable floater. His pull-up jumper in that range is just deadly. He's ultra creative and has a knack for weaving his way through spaces and cracks in the defense to score. It really feels like he's playing chess and is thinking through the next counter while you're playing defense. My biggest concerns on offense are just consistency across the board. He scores in bunches, meaning he'll have a 30-point game and then score four. He had 24 a few weeks ago, sandwiched between three games with a total of 11 points on four for 31 shooting. You'd almost rather have that production spread nicely across the season than in clumps like that. He's exceeded expectations from beyond the arc, but it's kind of a similar story which we'll get to later. But overall, he's got a really nice offensive package. Defensively, all the same offensive rules apply for Hood Chipino. He's strong, lengthy, and makes calm, cool, and collected plays pretty often. Not to mention he can size up from traditional point guard assignments, which is really big in the positionless NBA. Coming in, he was looked at as a legitimate two-way guard, and he's lived up to the hype. He's probably at his best on ball and as a point of attack defender. He fans out, moves his feet, and has a real care factor on that end. In the same way he pokes and prods on offense, he does so on defense, biding his time and waiting to strike at the ball like a cobra. He's got 22 steals in 22 games, and has turned plenty of that into opportunities for the Hoosiers. Off-ball is a similar but slightly less appealing story. 
He's attentive and engaged. He takes up passing lanes just a little less than I'd like with what looks to be a really solid wingspan, but that'll be something he can add to the bag later on. Lots of things need to be cleaned up, but overall you couldn't ask for much more from him than we've seen defensively. Passing and playmaking. I'm feeling warm. Here's where things get pretty exciting. Averaging 4.2 assists per game, Hood Shafino is a good and willing passer, which could be key for his lead guard potential in the NBA. He's much more of a passer than a playmaker, and I think his playmaking skills have a long way to go, but Indiana does do a great job of setting him up easy, predetermined plays to make. At first glance, the numbers are pretty good, but you really have to watch the film to get the full story. He's good, he keeps the ball moving and looks for offense where he can get it, but I don't believe he's cut from the same cloth as Anthony Black, Tyrese Proctor, or even guys like Amen Thompson. One thing we absolutely have to note here is that he is playing alongside Trace Jackson Davis, who is an absolute bucket getter and one of the best players in college basketball. I'm not knocking Huchifino by any means, but it's really hard not to notice that a huge, huge chunk of his passes are going right to TJD. By my very quick count, 42 of his 91 assists on the year are to Trace Jackson Davis. Now, a lot of that is by design. Like I talked about, he's really good in the PNR, and a lot of it he runs with Trace Jackson Davis. And it says something that he's even able to execute that much. But there's a pretty large chunk of them that when I watched, it's pretty much just Jackson Davis doing the dang thing. But Shifino does do a great job of mixing up, getting his own shots off, and getting teammates involved. At the end of the day, I think he's going to be a score-first guard who can make easy reads and plays without doing too much. Being 6'6 will help with that a ton in terms of vision. I got a little nitpicky in this section. Comparatively, he's an above average to good passer. He does average just under three turnovers per game, something that we'll need to take a closer look at, so we'll do that in the swing skills section. Overall feel, I leaned closer to hot here, but I ended up feeling warm on Hochefino's unquantifiable feel for the game. He stays cool under pressure for the most part, he looks uber confident all the time, and he's got these moments and flashes of some high feel that makes him look like the best player on the court at times. That mid-range game mixed with the PNR navigation makes him look like a pretty special prospect. But there's a decent amount on the opposite end of the spectrum as well. I'm inclined to lean more towards the good stuff, I think overall it kind of evens out. Huchipino doesn't necessarily have an elite skill or skills that really separate him or make him jump off the page, but his gumbo of size, fluidity, passing chops, creativeness, potential outside game, and more is pretty tantalizing. Alright, swing skill number one, shooting. Like I said, coming into the year, Huchipino wasn't thought of to be some high-level perimeter player. And while the numbers have been good, there's a few reasons to stop and take a look at them. The first is the exact same reason to hesitate on his overall offense, the bunch scoring. Over half of his three-pointers have come in just three games this season. Five apiece versus Iowa and Northwestern in back-to-back -back games, and six versus Ohio State. You obviously can't take those performances away, but if you filter those games out, he's shooting just 12 for 44, 27%. Again, you'd just much rather have those spread across the entire season to make you think he's more of a threat than it be so volatile in certain games. Mechanically, I think he's got pretty solid form. He kind of flicks it and has a really quick trigger style, but it's really smooth. The odd and potentially deterring part is that he doesn't get much arc on it for whatever reason. But there's reason to believe in his outside shot too, most of which to me is his shot variety. When I'm personally looking at potential shooters, one thing I really think is indicative of potential to get better from outside is shot variety, especially with long two-pointers. It's one thing to practice threes over and over and develop muscle memory there, but to be able to adjust that on the fly by taking steps in or out, to me is a pretty telling sign that someone is going to, in the least, have some workability on the perimeter. And Hood Shafino is really good at that. In the end, I've settled on a warm rating. I don't think 39% is completely transparent right now and certainly won't be at the next level, but there's enough touch and feel from the outside that I do think it's at least going to be some sort of weapon for Hood Shifino in the NBA. There's going to be an area that's gonna keep him off court. It's going to be the turnovers. For a player that I believe has relatively high basketball IQ and some reactionary-esque play, he just has a lot, a lot of turnovers. It really hampers him both as a passer and playmaker, and really just as a player in general. Diving into the film, I noticed a lot of his turnovers are just a good, solid mix. He's got freshman moments, loses the handle, 
outright bad decisions, lots of offensive fouls, travels, he gets overzealous as a passer, and honestly, I do not know what to think about that. I don't know if we should view that in a positive light, because theoretically it's not just his passing getting him in trouble, or a negative light because it's going to be too hard to address that many issues. Some of the offensive foul stuff he'll get away with much easier at the pro level, freshman moments will go with time, the handle will tighten up, the game does speed up a ton at the NBA level which I don't think bodes well for his early years, but I think there's going to be some room to simplify the game for him. If he can ever get to just a 2 to 1 assist to turnover ratio in the NBA, which I think he can, it'll be a win. The Grade I've given Hood Shifino a grade of 7.7. .7. There's a lot to like about Jalen Hood Shifino, and with some tweaking and improved play I could really see him as a lottery talent. But offensively, I do still have some question marks. If you can't consistently get to the paint, and if you mix that with any sort of drop off from three, you're kind of left with an incomplete offensive player. That being said, right now he plays like a five year vet already, and he's only going to be 20 in his first year in the NBA. Suffice to say, I think he's got a long, long career ahead of him in the league. In the absolute least as a bench floor general, and his mid to high projection is probably a starting caliber two way point guard who can help do all the right things, hit open shots, and play winning basketball. That, mixed with his basketball IQ, is absolutely something I'm willing to bet on. If teams are really sure that his issues are fleeting or that they can iron out the kinks, I could really see a team swinging as high as 10 on Hochefino, especially if they're in dire need of point guard help. I think the lower end of his range is probably in the 20s. I haven't quite nailed down my big board yet, but I think I'd have him somewhere from 13 to 17-ish. Huchifino is legit, he was super fun to dive into, let me know what you think of him, where you grade him, where you draft him. Again, Draft Digest Show, Spotify, Apple, we will have an episode on Jalen Huchifino up in a few days, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>